Welcome back, MMA Odds Breaker. Today we got Brandon Gertz getting ready to fight Melvin Giard. Bellator 140, 141. I, you know, we talked before the, the, the interview started. I haven't interviewed you in like three years. I totally forgot. Like, it's been a, it's been a long ass time since I've talked to you. Yeah. So I had to yeah, go back yeah. through and double check your record. You're kind of doing all right in Bellator. You kind of kind of found a home. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's brought, it's brought it out in me a little bit. <laughs> yeah, you're, uh, uh, you go back and look at your record beforehand. It was, it was, Pretty good, but the quality of, of opponent was kind of. Well, let, let's just be honest. The quality of opponent before he got in the belt was kind of shit. It was just like yeah. you know, it wasn't it wasn't the top end guys. Um, your decision lost to Campos. Uh, a lot of guys were impressed because, if I remember correctly, he was a super super favorite in that one. You kind of you stuck with him the whole way, um, and then you come immediately come right back in and submit Poppies. You know, uh, a couple yeah. months later. That's kind of been your your kind of mo. Like it seems like every time you hit tough competition, you rise to that competition, and they're kind of making it tougher every time you compete. Is that the same That's kind true. of mindset you feel like with Melvin too? That they're kind of giving you a tougher opponent. You got to step your game up again. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the better the fighter, the better I do. I like you know, the tougher the opponent, the more they bring it to me. The 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 more I shine, the more I want to want to fight back. You know. Does Melvin have anything that you haven't seen before? Like is in a, in a I mean I know in practice you've seen it but in an opponent like an actual guy getting in there do you, is he to me it seems like he's faster than some of the guys that you've competed against stronger than some of the guys you competed with but I haven't been in the cage against those guys you have yeah I'd say he's got that speed he, he's a counter striker you know he and he's fast with it but I'm not gonna say it's nothing I haven't seen I don't I don't think he's got anything that's that's crazy and amazing speed do you feel like I feel like that that after everyone kind of figured out he's going to come at you really hard and explosive and kind of crack you from the beginning, and you kind of wear, wear through that a little bit, like since people figured that out, he's kind of, he's had to adapt his style as well. Uh, do you feel like that he's, had a, he's going to have to adapt even more so to fight you? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, he's, he, that counter striking, everything he does, ain't, ain't gonna keep, I'm going to keep coming forward and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to most likely put him on his back. And we all know that's somewhere he doesn't like to be. You know, so I, I don't think it's easy to adapt to me. I'm just going to keep coming forward. You know, it's 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 hard to counter strike when I'm not stopping. Who's the uh, uh, your, your training partner? Your main training partner for you right now, and, and are they doing a good job of, of mimicking Melvin? Uh well, my main training partner is mostly Justin Gaethje. He's pretty much my my biggest training partner, and I got a buddy named LT, and then we got a boxer Manny that also does good good with uh, imitating him, but. Uh, yeah, um, really, like I said, I'm more working my, my game style, though, and that, that's just coming forward, you know, putting my pressure on him. I, I don't feel like he likes to be pressured the whole time. You know, he likes to pick his points. If I keep coming forward, it's he's not going to find them. Yeah, and that, that is one of the things he hates, at least from what I've seen. You know, obviously, I'm not in his training camp. I don't hang out with Melvin, but from what it looks like is that he has a difficult time when people are pressuring him. Uh, you know your weaknesses. you got to assume that he knows his weaknesses. Do you think that's one of the things he's trying to work on uh, to get prepared, knowing that you're going to be coming forward and pressuring the entire time? So this camp is is basically dealing with how to deal with a guy pressuring you the entire time. Yeah, I mean, I, I you know, like you said, I don't really see how he can work on it. <laughs> I work on me coming in on him, and he's not going to be able to stop it. And this this training camp ain't gonna, he ain't going to be able to put together a way to stop me coming in there on him, uh, throwing my punches and taking him down. No, you come forward a lot and you punch a lot, but if you look at your 11 wins, you've got only one KO, and most of your, most of your wins come via submission with seven of them and, of course, three decisions. So you are a hard striker. You like to strike, like to come forward, but you end up getting submissions. Is it because you, you, you're more of a submission guy or because you hit them so much, guys just ultimately give you the submission? And, that, and that's exactly how I feel. It's, that's how they usually come. I, I rock them with a shot, and they go down, and I just see the opportunity to put them out. You know, I mean, I'm not... I mean, I know it's entertainment, and I'm, I know it's an entertainment game. But when I see instincts take over, I just grab it. You know, it's the, it's usually like they're handing me the submission because they want to get out of there. Uh, you said Justin Gaith is your main training partner. It's almost the kind of style that he has as well. Did you teach Justin that, or did Justin teach you that? Or is it something you guys <laughs> developed together? Ah, uh, that's just something we really developed together. That's always been his style, and that's always been my style. You know, I mean. Gaethje, like you saw in the last fight, all he did was pressure him and keep it on the feet. Will be a little bit different because I like to change up my game. Gaethje in the last fight versus Melvin just wanted to prove prove that he could strike with Melvin the whole time. So he he didn't even if you seen that fight, he didn't even try to take him down one time. I won't be that nice. I won't be that nice to to Melvin. He will. 
he, he will feel the difference. <laughs> now, is it is it helpful to have a guy like Gage in your corner? You know, when when and being a training partner, when you get ready to fight the same guy that he that he just fought, does that help with you at all? Or and for the folks at home, Gage lost a split decision to, to Melvin. You know, getting beat after one. three rounds. One. Oh, excuse me, one. Excuse, I'm sorry, one one a split decision to Melvin. Yeah. I apologize. Does that help having a guy like Justin help train for a guy that you're about to fight as well? Uh, abs- absolutely. You know, it helps mentally too. Just, you know, my buddy, a guy I go in, go in with every day and he, he just beat this guy, you know, so mentally it's a, it's a game. And then, yeah, like I said, our styles and just his, his style to keep going forward and just fight is just, it's good to be around. Thanks so much, man, for coming out of the MMA Oddsbreaker. It's going to be a great fight, you know, and I'm one of those guys that, that, that I'm still kind of a nerd when it comes to fighting. Um, I feel bad for uh, my girlfriend, Jill, because <laughs> it'll be some weekends where, like, watch a fight on Friday night from the house. We'll be at a fight live on Saturday, and then I'm refing a fight on Sunday. And it's like, <laughs> and she's with me the entire time, and I'm the guy that goes there from the very beginning to the very end. I want to be there during the prelims when the stadium is empty. I'm sitting in my seat watching these guys fight because I love fighting still. This fight for me, I'm a huge fan of Melvin's. Like, I really enjoy his style. I really enjoy his tenacity. I didn't care you got popped for coke back in the day because it just wasn't one of those things that, that really bothered me, you know, about it. Because back then everybody was doing drugs, so it just wasn't wasn't a situation. And I really like this fight, though. I like your style. I like how you come forward. I like how you pressure. I think this is Melvin's kryptonite is when a guy that pressures him. But I'm also interested to see how both of you grow as fighters inside this cage. Do you think this is a fight that you're gonna finish? That you're gonna be able to finish Melvin and, and not end up having to win a split decision like like Justin does? Or you get, do you think you'll be able to put him put him away come third round? Uh, I think it'd be crazy if it if if the fight didn't get finished. I mean, either way, I mean, he's a hard striker. I'm a hard striker, and if if I had to, if I was a bet man, if I had to, if I had to bet, I'd say he's gonna hand me his arm. So he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna want it to be over. Well, there you, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. You need to bet the under, and you need to bet a submission on Brandon. If you're gonna put money down on this one, take Brandon to win by submission in the under. That's uh, that's what he said. Let's see if uh, that actually comes together. Brand, thanks so much for coming on here. It was a pleasure. I apologize for being three years in between interviews. We have to do this more often. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Thanks for having me, man. You got it, brother. We'll talk soon. Uh, you have a good one. Thanks, bro.